Elevation and love. Welcome to Ninth Note Art. I'm Andre Romance, and today we're going to be going over shading and blending. Let's get right into it. So here we are in our Photoshop. Uh, it doesn't matter what platform you are using. Uh, the two brushes that we are going over is the softness and the hardness brush. Um, these two brushes are uh, pretty standard across all platforms as far as, far as uh, painting. So this first brush uh, that we're going to be dealing with is the hardness brush. Hardness just means that the opacity is at 100 and the edge of the brush is hard. And so if we click or tap on our screen, we will get a hard circle here. And if we drag that down, we'll get a hard stroke. One thing that we are able to do as far as uh, blending with the hardness brush is use pen sensitivity or pen pressure. And how we get to that is there's this icon up here that allows us to use pen sensitivity with opacity. And so with opacity, however light you tap or touch the screen, it will give you that variation of hardness or softness. Now the softer I press on this, the lighter it will show up. And the harder I press, the darker this is going to show up. But when using this, this uh, setting, the paintbrush will stay the same size. Now, if we'd like to go and take it a step further, we can use this icon over here that allows us to uh, use sensitivity with the actual brush size. And this means the softer we touch or the harder we touch, the bigger the paintbrush gets. So if we start off with an, a soft and we can go harder and harder and harder. We end up with a fatter line. This is another way that we can shade or uh, get different characteristics when uh, shading and blending. One thing I want to point out is that based on uh, how well your sensitivity is set inside of your your program for your tablet will identify how well or how smooth these lines transition as you use hardness or softness in your strokes. Um, and this is all done with the hardness brush. Now, if we want to go and we want to look at it in a soft brush, soft brush has the ability to show up in feathering. And so what we get here is we get a heart dot in the center that fades out to whatever color is behind the stroke. And so if we do this stroke, we have the ability to have this feather edge, which will, you know, go up, come into play later on when we get ready to uh, shade. When we apply the uh, pen pressure setting with this one, it allows us to maintain that feathered look, but at the same time, uh, go with a, a, a sensitive line that is uh, lighter to the touch okay and the lighter we go the more lighter that line will be okay and also if we want to throw in the same um, effects that we did before with the brush size sensitivity we can also do that as well okay so these are your options with these two brushes and that's what we're going to start with so let's bring up a new layer here let's get rid of that one i'm going to grab my marque tool i'm going to get into some circles here okay Let's go back to our brush. Let's start off with the hardness brush. Okay. 
is I want to give you a clean example. All right, so let's get into these shapes and these colors. We'll start out with a hardness brush, 100 opacity, 100 hardness. And if we want this to be a 2D shape, we'll grab a lighter shade of that same color. And we'll just sweep across and create a 2D object. Now to the eye, this looks natural. This is a very simple uh, design, very simple shape with two colors. But the moment we start to manipulate the shading of different layers of colors, we start to see this shape become a little more a little more than just 2D. This is a very interesting way to shade. And a lot of people shade like this um, when they're trying to get their colors together on objects. And there's nothing wrong with shading like this. There's nothing wrong with starting like this as far as getting the colors to where you want them to be. But the moment we start to get into defining uh, what are the highs and lows of objects? Um, we want the pixelation to be a little more defined, a little more clear. And ways that we can do that is by using the opacity. Now we're continuing to keep the same hardness. The edges are going to remain the same hardness, but we're going to go ahead and add in a little a, feather, a little feathering with the hardness brush. So what we're going to do is select a color and we're going to go one stroke over the area that we did before. And we're going to do that again multiple times overlapping until we get a nice uh, blend in all of these colors. Now what this does is it gives us a bunch of smaller sections of different colors that we're utilizing here. And all we're doing is selecting those in between colors and applying them down with light pressure. Now it's, it's maintaining the same size brush, but it's changing the opacity of the colors that we're color selecting. And it's putting that into perspective for us. The lighter we press, the lighter the color comes out. And the harder we press, the harder the color comes. The more deep the color is. So if we want this purple to come a little higher, we can select that color and go over it until it feels right for us. Okay, so here we have uh, blending using the hard brush with opacity. You know, now with opacity, it's all about skill 
and um in your preference of touch some people they they draw hard-handedly and um, you have those that draw with a light touch so you know having the pen sensitivity on helps a bunch with this blending technique um now if you are not as good with uh how well you articulate sensitivity using a pen then by all means you can use the second option which would be to use the the softness brush now if we want to be a little more detailed and a little more uh, uniform with our shading we can use the second option and that would be to use the softness brush so we'll go back in and we'll do the same thing we did before let's color in our color our first color using 100 percent opacity And now let's change our brush to the softness brush. And now we can get started with that. Now, this is without sensitivity. This is just that paintbrush. with that feathered edge rather than the hard edge. Now, with this, we are able to select what that center area would be of this feathered line to start our blending. We don't necessarily have to use a pin sensitivity to get to this area. And so with that first stroke, we see that we already have a good blend going and we're just going to continue to color select and blend let's grab this uh this color here so we can go in with this whiteness and we'll select the area in between there and we're just going to feather out until we get back down into the area where we were before. If you're not sure what button I'm pressing, I'm pressing the Alt key. I am on a Windows computer. But all we're doing is selecting the in-between area of colors and doing one stroke. You're stroking over the same area that you're uh, trying to blend. And then in return, you get this really smooth uh, feathering effect in between those colors. And the more you go over it, the more you color select in those areas, the smoother this is going to turn out. Okay. So those are your two options there as far as paintbrush. Um, just to start out, this is the basic uh, principles when it comes to shading and blending. But uh, what if you want to uh, test your skills to a whole nother level, right? What if you what if you want to just get the best out of out of uh, out of your skills? What if you really really want to test your skills, right, and just go to the next level? Um, I believe that we can do that. as well I think we could do that by utilizing not only the sensitivity uh, as far as opacity but also uh, throwing into the loop the pen brush size sensitivity right so if we go back to our hardness brush we are looking at 
uh, turning this setting on, which is going to give us the sensitivity of the uh, the paintbrush size changing as we push down, right? As we push down, it gets bigger. And as we uh, as we uh, press lightly, softer it'll get. And so we start off with this color, right? And we just lightly press. And with this technique, we're just going to uh, scrape drag without changing um, without changing the colors too much. We're just going to throw the color in there. I'm going to give it a couple scrapes. Right. What we're doing here is allowing the brush to pretty much do all of the work that we're uh, that we're trying to do here. We're letting the pressure of the the hand the hand gesture and the hand movement uh, predict how these lines are going to lay in. Um, how these are, are going to blend together. And this is just based on the softness that I'm using, how hard I'm pressing. Uh, again, we're not changing the color too much. We're just smearing around the colors until we uh, get what we what we're looking for. This gives you the idea of textures and this makes things look more realistic um, depending on the type of uh, the type of style of art that you're doing. OK, so you have here a more of a paintbrush stroke style here. This is more of your traditional way of what oil the painting would look like or, you know, versus uh, watercolor, which is a more subtle way of blending colors so let's see if we can do something else here let's try one with multiple colors okay let's get a blue we'll turn off these settings for now just to get it structured and let's go with mm, a green let's try a green okay Let's make it even harder. Let's throw in a little orange. Okay. So now we got these colors that are clashing eyeball wise, right? And we're going to go with that same method. Let's turn the sensitivity on for both. Um, let's make it a little more interesting too. Let's go ahead and let's make it with the soft brush. And let's see how this turns out. This just goes to show how easy something like this could be done. Just applying the right principles, right? So we got one stroke there. I'm going to select that in between color. And I'm going to begin to feather out this half here. Now, once I have that, have created that half, I can get the work and make this look however I want it to look. And you just work it back and forth until you get exactly uh, what you feel looks good or feels good to you. Then I go on the other side of that color and I, I begin to work the darker side. 
I'm just following I'm following what I feel here you know there's no right way to do this you know when you're blending it's all about what looks good and what feels good to the eye and that's what you want to stay true to and we're going to come down here grab the blue we're going to do one stroke of that and it's all about the sensitivity of the hand and if we aren't sure about uh, some areas, you know, we can always go back and redefine those by adding more brush strokes. Okay. The beauty about art is that there's never a way to mess a painting up. There's never a way to mess up a painting because the painting is done when you say it's done. It doesn't have to fit into certain categories. It doesn't have to be as detailed as some artists may do. And it doesn't have to be as simple as some artists would like to do. But simply follow your heart. Follow your heart and blend to the best of your ability using the feel and the vibes that that you're dealing with at the time. And, so, and that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. But all in all, what we're doing is finding the medium between the two. And the more we color select, like I said before, the more we color select, the smoother we can get those uh, those areas of transition. Some people they may get done in four or five strokes. Some some people may take a couple hundred strokes to get the color or the, the fine tuning that uh, that they desire to get in their paintings. But all in all, it comes down to how descriptive do you want to be in your shading. Um, overall, test your eye. Test your eye, right? Let's throw one crazy, unusual shape that we didn't do before. Let's do one more. Okay. And maybe this time, let's do something that we didn't do before. Let's do something even more crazy. Okay, so that we got a green here. Let's go ahead and drop that with the hardness again, with all of those turned off. And the reason why we want those all off is just so we can get a a, a familiar familiar setting, right? Okay. Purple and pink. Uh, let's throw a red in there. Because maybe we want to put red somewhere. Okay. All right. We're going to challenge ourselves to the max today. All right. So let's go back in with that soft brush and we're going to change the opacity and we're going to color select that pink we're going to do one stroke over the top of there select the red we'll do one stroke over the top of there Right. Select the green the color select over the top right there. And we'll get that blue and we'll color stroke over the top of there. OK. 
okay now we have intersected all of the lines that we wanted to intersect using these colors right and now what we want to do is go ahead and blend these in now really challenge yourself to this um, this is how we get better you may not see exactly what you're looking for at the time but you have to find ways to blend all of these colors together and make them make sense And it just comes down to uh, a lot of patience, eyeballing what you see, really studying the different areas here and how these are going to really blend together. Red, that picking the in-between color. If you don't come out with the with the results that you want, don't be discouraged. That's what this practicing uh, is all about, and that's what we are all about. We're about bettering ourselves by challenge our, challenging ourselves to do things that we wouldn't normally do. Like, we wouldn't normally do stuff like this. Or maybe you would. Maybe you're the type of person that loves, you know, abstract art. And you can get down with this, like, super fast and easy. Or maybe it's your first time challenging yourself to this magnitude. But whatever the case is, find your niche. And you find that niche by just sampling. Sample these. Different things, try new things. Gotta try new things, yeah. You see, now we have a collage of colors. A collage of things happening. And all we're doing is color selecting and putting in. We're allowing the, the pencil to do all the work. We're not pushing hard. We're allowing that opacity to be set pretty low so we can actually get a good tone in the question is what really would this center area look like and a good answer would be gray once you start mixing all the colors together usually they turn out as black but if you're missing some colors you're gonna get this gray sound, right? It's gonna be a little grayish. And you wouldn't think that you would get gray from different colors, but it's true. Okay. there we have it we blended all these colors in um, I'm fairly satisfied with the way this turned out it was a really good practice it challenged me to look into four different directions as these colors blend together and tie them all in and so this just gives us an idea of the things that we can do once we start dealing with opacity and uh, pressure sensitivity so there we have it and um, i hope you all enjoyed this exercise i hope that you go back a few times and practice these um 
you will get better over time if you're not there already. Uh, but be encouraged, be uh, motivated. Elevation and love. I'll see you all in the next one.